Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm TJ, the creative behind TJ's Magic Touch. If you are new here, thank you so much for watching. I hope you consider subscribing. And if you are returning, thank you so much for the continued support. I truly appreciate it. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design these really cute food tray lids. These trays can be used to hold treats such as homemade popcorn, chocolate covered Oreos, chocolate covered strawberries. They can also be used to hold various children's toys, children's activities, such as mini coloring books, slime kits, but they are also great for holding custom party favors. This video will stay very close to Photoshop basics and I will run through the workspace with you and show you that this is a very simple design to do. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. When you open up Photoshop, here is your home screen and right under the word home, you'll see a tab called learn. If you click on learn, it opens up all of these hands-on tutorials that can kind of help you navigate through Photoshop. It is a great reference guide. I will say it is a great reference for you to use to get through and navigate Photoshop basics. At the top is your menu bar. You will see this in the Photoshop home screen as well as your Photoshop workspace when you open up Photoshop. Okay, so now we're gonna click on create new. This opens up our new document panel and here you will see all of the recent size media that you have created. When you click on the save tab, you will see the stuff that you say from like the preset stuff that you see right here with Photoshop. And here they basically have basic print sizes, standard um, stuff for web design, mobile, etc. So this is where you would go to kind of help get a jump start if you if you were into um looking for something new for this particular design i'm not going to change any of the preset details i am literally going to set it up as an 11 by eight and a half which is a basic sheet of paper typically i don't do this for templates but for this one i will so after you have everything set you're going to click on create once you click on create your Photoshop workspace opens up. Here's where the magic happens, so to speak. Um, I'm going to go to the top to Window, Workspace, and Essentials Default. If by chance yours does not look the same, Window, Workspace, and then you are going to Reset Essentials. This will give you the same screen that I have here. Now we're going to get our rectangle to make the design for our lid. So we'll go to our shape tool and select on rounded rectangle tool. Another quick tip when you are looking at your tools, these letters along the side are keyboard commands. So you can also select it in order to get to the tool you want without actually going to click on the tool. You can click the letter on your keyboard. In order to make your shape, you're going to left click on your mouse and simply drag it across the screen. Since we have the measurements for the shape we are making, it does not matter how big or how small you drag the shape because over to the right in our properties panel under transform is where we're actually going to type in the measurement for the shape that we want or for the size that we want. So for width, we're going to type in 8.31. And for the height, we are going to type in 5.88. In the top left-hand corner, you'll see your move tool. You can also get here by selecting V on your keyboard. If at any time when you are working in Photoshop and you don't know what a tool does, you can simply click on learn how and it'll show you how to use that particular tool. So moving the rectangle is more of a personal preference just to get it higher up on the screen. It's not something that is necessary, but I do like to work in the center. To round off my corners, I'm going to pull at this little blue circle here. As you can see, you can pull it in as much or push it out as much as you'd like. 
to round off your corners. Over to the right under our properties panel, if you look at appearance, there is a little chain link. As long as that link is selected, when you pull one corner, all four corners will do the same thing. If that link is not selected, you will pull one corner and only one corner will move. Just like when you pull your corners, the same goes with typing. As long as you have this chain link selected, whatever ratio you type in one box will automatically pop to the other three boxes. So I'm going to set this at 203px and that will give me 203px um, all the way around without me having to individually type it. So this is the template this is the size of the lid this is the shape of the lid this is what we design with or design on top of for our lid the easiest way to change the color of our rectangle is under the properties panel under appearance and simply change the color in the field box there are other ways to do this, but again, the simplest method of doing so is simply changing the color under the properties panel. So for this design, I will be using a drag and drop method. Here is the folder of clip art and digital papers. I got these um, files from prettygraphic.com and I will um, pull up the website so you can see they provide both the JPEG and the PNG version of their files so you can have um, both images to choose from. I actually picked up a couple of different sets and I'm going to be using one of these sets for uh, this particular design today. Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to show you prettygraphic.com. I get a lot of digital papers and clip art from this website. As you can see, I am currently logged in, which is why everything shows $0. I purchased their lifetime access plan, and I want to say I purchased it maybe three years ago. One of the amazing things about it is... It literally is lifetime access and it's unlimited downloads so whenever they come up with new designs new clip arts new papers um, you have access to them I'm showing you now um, without being logged in so you can see the prices I'm using these two packs in the design they're 99 cents each um, some of the other clip arts that I show in the folder are this um, Valentine baby and the Valentine trips. I was able to download all of those because again, I have the lifetime access plan. I purchased the plan during Black Friday. The plan is regular $1.99, but they also have two installment plans so you can either do the four payments of $49 a month or you can do the eight payments of $24 a month which gives you 30 downloads up until it is paid in full so it is a really good plan it's a really good thing to have as a designer they do include the um, commercial use license with your purchase so I really like working with their designs okay now back to what we are working on i like to use the drag and drop method it is one of the easiest ways to bring um, art and images onto the screen so you'll see i'm going to click on this digital paper here and literally drag it and drop it onto my workspace double click to place it and then I'm going to adjust it. Now, as you can see, the sheet is a 12 by 12 basically, and our shape is a rectangle. Now, if you hold Control T, this allows you to transform the paper. However, when you do this, it distorts the image almost. So you can stretch it only so far without actually changing the look of the image so instead of doing Control t to transform 
the paper to make it stretch across the screen I'm going to make sure that my move tool is still selected I'm going to open up the paper proportionately so that it covers the entire rectangle then I'm going to go up top to my menu bar I'm going to click on layer and I'm going to create a clipping mask this puts the image inside of the shape now remember with the clipping mask if you move your paper around it will show the rectangle underneath because it is not one image it is a layer that is clipped over the layer underneath it so what you want to do is make sure that when you are moving it and making your adjustments you are moving it to where you have the paper right where you want it and then you have a few options you can do you can merge the layers together you can lock the layers so that they don't move anymore um, but I will do another video and get more in depth with what you can and cannot do in regards to using a clipping mask for this tutorial I'm going to make sure both of my layers are selected I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge those two layers together. Now that I have merged the layers together, I can move the shape around freely. Now, if you look right here at the bottom and at the top left hand corner, the white hearts blend in with the white background. So I'm going to go to FX at the bottom and stroke. This puts a frame or a border around my design, so to speak. Simply using my eyedropper tool, I can select a color within the pattern and I can use that so that it blends together and it won't be just a random blue frame around it or a random green color. I can use the color found within the clip art to line the image in order to make it easier to cut it out. So I'm gonna keep this design simple and I'm going to do the drag and drop method for two, um, two images of clip art. I'm gonna start with this bunting banner just to show you some techniques. After I place the banner on the screen, I am going to adjust it so that it is the size that I want. Now, looking at it straight on, it somewhat blends in with the background. I mean, because it was a it was a set, so the images match. So, in order to make it stand out, I'm going to go to FX and Stroke, and I'm just going to add a stroke around it to give it a lifted look. You can add a what's called a drop shadow. You can mess with the distance of the drop shadow to make it stretch out further. You can change whether it's on the top or the bottom. You can increase the thickness of your stroke. These are simple things that I do to change the look of an image, to change the look of text that I've added to the screen. I just adjust the strokes and I adjust the drop shadow just to give it a different look. Once I have the bunting banner where I want it, and have it to where it kind of stands out a little bit while also still blending in i'm going to place it down by double clicking and now it is in place where i want it basically i'm going to repeat those same steps with the happy valentine's day png i'm just going to mess with the strokes mess with the drop shadow until it looks the way that i want it to look
Now that I have the design where I want it to be, I'm going to go to File and Save As. You can choose to save to your cloud documents or save on the computer. I choose to save on the computer. Whatever folder you save in pops up. I had that pop up off screen as to not show anyone's information. And then after you save it as a PSD, remember you want to save it as a PSD first in order to maintain um, access to your layers. And then you want to go and save it as a PDF so that you can print. So I'm going to save it as a PDF. I'm going to print it out and then I'm going to show you how to assemble. So here are the foil pens that we'll be using. They are found from Dollar Tree. Here's a close up of the SKU number. They hold up to two and a quarter pound of food. You will also need some type of adhesive. I will be using a tape runner. But also found at Dollar Tree is this permanent double-sided tape. That is an option. You can also use the 3M double-sided tape or your favorite brand of craft glue. Along with these items, you will need a pair of scissors as well as your printed out design. And as you can see on our design, you see that very light stroke that we added so you can see. Now I'm not gonna make you watch me cut this out, so I'm gonna cut it out and then come back. You wanna make sure that you carefully peel off the stickers that hold the lids in place because you don't want that residue on your foil pans and you don't want to accidentally rip the lid. So once you take that tape off, you just simply apply your adhesive, your tape runner, your tape, or your craft glue to the back of your design and you simply lay it on top of the lid one of the good things about this is if you place your um your printed out design a little off to the side which you'll see i do here it's okay because the flaps of the lid fold over so you won't really be able to see it anyway once it's all said and done Now that we are done, let's stuff these boxes. This shred comes from Dollar Tree also. I'm going to stick two Reese's in there. This cute little design is found in my Etsy shop. So if you need a last minute idea, here's one for you. I'm also going to add these really cute lollipop suitcase holders. This design is found on andrinascreations.com. The lollipop inside is from Dollar Tree as well. Also to make a cute mint to be, I attached four Lifesaver mints. You can get a bag of those from Dollar Tree also to place inside of the lollipop suitcase holder. I will list and link all descriptions in the description box below for you. After you fill your tray, you simply close it and that's it. You're all good to go. Okay, so I'm going to apply the other two lids just so you can see them. As you can see, the one that was kind of off center, you can't even tell once you close the flaps on the side. So that's a really good thing is that you don't have to apply it exactly perfect. It still works out. That is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get to try this out with some party favors. Let me know if you do. Thank you so much for watching. I do again apologize for the wait. I promise to bring you more content without such a big gap in between. Please do not forget to like, comment, share because sharing is caring. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and check out the other videos in relation to this one. Go out and craft something magical and until next time, bye guys.